American physician and author Martin Henry Fisher once noted that knowledge is a process of piling up facts. Wisdom lies in their simplification. I mention that here to say that this video will not delve into the very depths of color itself, and the only time you'll hear me use jargon like photons, wavelengths, visible light nanometers, and so on is right here and right at this moment. We won't get into how a color is made or even how your brain reads color. I just find that so many technical conversations in design and photography devolve into this very charlatan-esque conversation that is only spoken in the company of the very most elite. This is the video for you and me, regular people who use regular words and maybe occasionally expand our vocabulary. This is design or photography, not English class. And it's certainly not a primer on algebra or trigonometry. If you've ever worked with color on your computer, you've probably seen hexadecimal codes. You know, those seemingly random strings of six letters or numbers that make up colors on your computer, in Photoshop, or in your web design project. How do these numbers work? Can we make sense of them? Well, before we do that, let's have a quick bit of fun and test my ideas to see if you should even stick around and watch this at all. Can it even be done? Well, check this out. What we have here is a hex code test where you guess the color based upon the code and using the information I'm gonna give you in this video, you will be able to make informed guesses based upon the hex code to figure out the color. In this instance, I know that this color has gotta be a color that has a lot of red, a bit of green, and an okay amount of blue, overall a fairly bright color. But I know that red plus green equals yellow but then tempered with a little bit of blue, I'd be willing to bet that the color is either this orangey color or this salmon color. I think I'm gonna go with the salmon color. And sure enough, that's right. Let's try it again. Now here, this color has almost no red in it. It has not very much green and an okay level of blue. So I know blue is the primary color and overall it's gonna be a dark color. There's the darkest blue, let's give it a shot and that's correct. Let's try one more here. Now this color has a lot of red, not very much green, and not even very much blue. So it's going to be a color that's influenced by blue, but is primarily red and is very dark. So it's either this maroon color or this color here. Let's go with this color out here, and sure enough, that is correct. Not bad at all. But how does this all work, and how can you get a better idea of how these codes work? Well, let's get back to basics. Your screen, your monitor, your display, it displays color by mixing its three base color channels of red, green, and blue. Each of these channels has 256 sort of openings into which that color can be added. So for a solid white pixel, you have 256 pieces of red, 256 pieces of green, and 256 pieces of blue. The red, green, and blue channels are all completely full. That makes bright white. If they're all set to zero, they're all empty, and that's a black or the absolute darkest pixel you can get. So these 256 levels or openings, if you will, they're numbered from zero to 255. The zero counts as one of the digits, and that's where we get the 256 levels from. Zero is absolutely empty, while 255 is that channel full of its color. So a color that is 255 red while being zero green and zero blue, that will be a solid bright as can be red. The hex code is a way of telling the screen how much of each of these colors to display. Basically, how many pieces of color get put into each channel to brighten and intensify that color in the mix that will make up the finished desired color. By mixing these RGB, red, green, blue channels, we can get a myriad of different possible colors to be displayed. All right, enough of the initial stuff. Let's start breaking down the hex code. The hex code that we all know and we all love is comprised of three distinct parts, each of which you can glean some information from if only you know how to crack the code. But it's simple. 
The first two characters tell the computer how much red to pour into the color. The second two characters tell the computer how much green to add. And the third two characters tell the computer how much blue it should add to create one complete color. Now, the hex numbers use 16 digits because to get any number between 0 and 255, you need a formula that has 256 numbers. So the max value being 16 times 16, which equals 256. But the problem quickly arises that if we needed to put an 11 next to like a three, we would have three or four numbers in each spot where we only have two digits. So that's why among the digits that are used, you see letters because the 16 digits that are used are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then A representing 10, B representing 11, C representing 12, D representing 13, E representing 14, and finally F representing 15. Remember, we're dealing with 16 digits, but one of those digits is zero. So we still do have 16 digits overall, even with F ending up on 15. Now, because we know this piece of information, we can start breaking down a hex code into numbers. So let's start basic. We know that 000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 is solid black. The channels are completely drained. While FF, FF, FF is full on white. Channels completely full, maxed out brightness. Let's break down white and see how we get there. As I just said, we get white on a computer display by maxing out the color channels and creating the brightest color we can. In the hexadecimal numbers, F equals 15. So if we convert that FF, FF, FF code to just numbers, it's basically 15 six times in a row because each F stands for the number 15. But how do these numbers correlate and equal 255 for each pair of 15s? Remember, every two Fs is one of the color channels. The first FF is the red channel, the second FF the green channel, the third FF the blue channel. Well, the equation is difficult but simple all at the same time. It's really simple and easy once you set it in your mind and rest it in your heart. The first of the two digits is the big number. You take that number and you multiply it by 16. So that first F would be 15 times 16. Then you take the smaller number and multiply it by one. Essentially, you just take the smaller number and do nothing to it. So you would have 15 times 16 and then 15. Next, you would add both of these numbers together. And that resulting number is the level of color that goes into that channel from zero to 255. So in this case, 15 times 16 equals 240 plus 15 equals 255. And the same will be the case for each of our color channels, which is gonna max out the colors and will display a bright white. So once more, let's go back and try that test again and I'll walk you through some of what I'm thinking about. We'll go with the test that's a little simpler here with only five colors. So I know that these first two numbers, that is my red channel. The second two here are my green channel and the final ones are my blue channel. Now of these, the five is the big number. That's the number being multiplied by 16. So there's a bit of red and the four is being multiplied by 16 for my green channel. There's a bit of green, but then we have an A, the number 10 being multiplied by 16. So I know that there's more blue in this color than anything else. Now overall, the colors are kind of low, right? These are all in that bottom half of my hex code. They're all below 10 in terms of the numbers. So it's probably not a super bright blue, but I know that the color is probably one of these three blue colors. And by considering the fact that there's a little bit less green than red, that tells me that the blue is probably heading more in the direction of purple. So my initial guess would be this color right here. And you can see, that based upon what we read from this hex code, we guessed the correct color the first time. Now let's try it again. Here, we can once more look, and two is the big number. Two times 16 is only 32. So there's not a lot of red here. Now over here, F, the big number, is the highest we can get. So we have 240 plus nine levels of green. So a lot of green and not a lot of blue. So that tells me it's probably this very bright green. 
When you max out the green, you get a lot of green. When you have no red or blue or not much to counterbalance it, it's probably just that very bright green. And sure enough, it is. Let's do one more breakdown here. So this color here, 6B, there's an okay amount of red. There's a lot of green and there's even a lot of blue. Remember D is a big number and that's multiplied by 16. Now when you mix blue with green, what do you get? You get a teal or an aqua. So the color I'm almost certain is that aqua color right there. And look at that. We got it right three out of three. And the next step is just playing with these and learning the colors well enough that maybe you can offhand punch in letters and numbers and create your own color and at least have some idea of what color will come out. Oftentimes in my tutorials, people see me punch colors in and think that I've memorized the whole hex code. Trust me, I haven't. But when you have an idea of what the red, green, and blue will do, you always have an idea of kind of what color it should be. One last thing. Wouldn't it just have been easier to create the RGB numbers and specify 200 red, 75 green, 150 blue, and your hex code could be like 200, 75, 150? But that wouldn't be this compact series of six numbers that are easily and instantly decoded by the computing power of electronics the world around. And maybe also it's because it's a geek's world and the rest of us are just living in it. <laughs>